so what we've got going on now, we've got some baseline pulls on this car to see what it does on the stock ECU that's been reflashed. And now we're getting ready to do the installation of wood link. So we've got over here, we've got the new E86 plug and play ECU. As you guys can see, super nice, fits in the actual factory location. It's got the actual bosses for the factory mount. It's got our comms port, our setup for the can. So it's gonna be a very, very easy installation. Just basically gonna take the old out, plug the new in, bolt it up, get our comms cable hooked up and start with the rest of the process. Additionally, we're gonna add in a can lambda. Obviously, real important to know what the wide man's doing, so get some data from that. So this is gonna just plug into our can um, plug that we have already, so it's gonna be another super easy installation for that. So something that's pretty unique to this box is that um, this is a plug and play unit, but the beauty of this as well is that we have inside here uh, lots of other bits and bobs that are very useful. So if we move this out of the way real quickly, you guys can get access in here and see We've got three different jumpers here that allow you to toggle between some OEM um, inputs and basically driving these inputs to our expansion. So not only do you have all these connectors basically for your IO, but you, if you have extra things like nitrous control or methanol control or anything that you wanna monitor, you can bring these in through these expansion ports. So it gives you a, the, the capacity to have some more inputs and outputs. The other thing that's really, really cool about this box is that this box is unique in the sense that it allows us to not only control the DI and the port injection, but let's just say hypothetically that we're over this engine and we want to put something new, 2J, LS, this ECU will support it. With the advantage here is that we can repopulate these jumpers to actually have control to as many as eight outputs. So if you want to run an LS motor, this EC will work. If you want to run a 2J motor, this EC will work. Any kind of conceivable engine swap you want to do, this will do it as well as it's going to stream the CAN bus to the dash. So whether or not you're running the stock engine or an aftermarket engine, either one is still going to be displayed through your factory dash. So super, super nice, super clean, super tidy. Uh, yeah, so the, the advantage of Link. Hey guys, Jason here with Link. Uh, just finished up the plug and play 2 for the 86 or the FRS. Uh, went really, really well. Um, got some data to share. So this is a pretty unique build. Turbocharged, the engine combination is a little different than your factory, but ultimately it was a great result. So really happy about the amount of control. Typically in the past, these have been really challenging to tune uh, with a lot of OEM or reflashing devices. You might not get the outcome that you're really wanting. Control on this was great. Uh, injection timing, Ignition timing, boost control, all the parameters. This is running on ethanol, so there's a true flex fuel carb. Um, from the standpoint of what we picked up, as far as from the control mechanism, really the advantage is around the intake and exhaust cam timing, especially with a turbocharged application. So when the car came in, it was making roughly about 380 horsepower and roughly 390 foot-pounds of torque. It was tuned at about 20, 21 pounds of boost, and the tune after we took a look at it was probably a little too aggressive to actually put onto a track. I mean, it might be okay from a street aspect, but from a tracking, it's probably a little bit on the aggressive side. So again, using the link, we have to fail safe. We all wanted to engage, but also more importantly, we just want the tune to be safe so you can go out and beat up on the car. So uh, with that being said, we were actually able to accomplish quite a bit on the top end of it. So we went from 380, to 412 horsepower at the top, so we picked up almost 30 horsepower. But we, the biggest thing, we didn't lose the torque. We're still at 390 or so foot-pounds of torque. So we've given them a really nice flat torque graph, which is now conducive to a rising horsepower. 
So all in all, I'm pretty satisfied with the tune and I think Tanner has some concerns around the drivability and just basic you know, usability, car starting, cold starts, that kind of stuff. Uh, hopefully we got some positive feedback from Tanner. Yeah, so a lot of problems that we were having before were really specific to just doing a reflash setup. Um, a lot of it, you know, like on startup, sometimes it would die. Uh, coming off throttle, it would kind of die again. Uh, it, it was getting frustrating, especially, you know, pulling into grid and stuff like that. We did do a test day with it and we saw a lot of shortcomings in the previous tune. And a lot of that has to do with that torque curve. So now I'm really excited because this is more similar to cars I've driven in the past where I get really nice responsive car no matter where I'm at in the rev range. I mean, as long as the car is in boost, then we should be able to do something good. So uh, I'm really excited. Plus, like one of the biggest problems I was running into was cooling because we weren't controlling the fans before. And now I can actually utilize the nice radiator I bought, control the fans early, and hopefully I can do a lot more hot laps. Yeah, 100%. So that was another thing that we saw with the control. We were able to help with some of the thermal dynamic aspects, and that's a combination of lots of different things, ignition timing. That's how the motor's operating. So we've had it now. It's been between 80 and 90 degrees here, ambient temperature. We've been on the dyno for a fair part of a day. Cool temps are staying good. Everything seems like it's good. So I think we're ready to actually take this thing to the track and hammer it down.